they only know the football player. Right. And what's a, what I want to also bring to the forefront is that you're not just a big, big moose, as they used to say. No disrespect, right. but years ago, go over there, moose, go over there. No, 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 you're so much more than that, dear. Because of the fact that you invested in yourself, and speak on it, they have the importance of investing in yourself. Well, you, early. The, 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 the one thing that you have to always take into account is you are the only one at the end of the day that you're accountable to. You are the only one. So your behavior, your behavior should be, will be, and will always be attributed to your success. It's the mindset you develop and you establish when going into any venture or anything you decide to venture towards. And always keep in mind about the theory of nothing. I was just always keep in that. mind about the theory of nothing. And as the great Paul J. Myers would say it, whatever you vividly imagine can come. Ardently desire and enthusiastically act upon shall inevitably come to pass. Come to fruition. Never forget, never forget that. Well, also I want to speak of down south. How is it that it seems that, well, it's an essential. All of us were made to go to church, to the mosque or wherever you had to go. You had to give a certain amount of praise to who you believed in. How important was that for you? Very important. My, my family owned the church back in Franklin, Louisiana, the Robertson family. Um, my Aunt Princess, God rest her soul, she, uh, Princess and Percy made sure that they dragged as many of us to church as we possibly could. Mm -hmm. um, um, almost every Sunday when I was a boy. And um, I recall it like yesterday that uh, uh, I could see us almost, as I'm standing, sitting there, I could see us dressed up um, in our Sunday best. Me and my sister and my brother Chris uh, trolling the church uh, over on 3rd Street, St. James Methodist Church. Uh, Methodist? Methodist, with my mom and dad. and uh, That's close to AME. Yes, it is. It was AME. And, and it was almost like, uh, it's almost like yesterday I could see it. I mean, I'm 63 years old, so we're talking a cool at least 55 years ago. Uh, but I can see it like it was yesterday uh, that we did it, and uh, yeah, I mean it, it was it was it was essentially the grassroots of the beginning and the evolution of a uh, of maturity for me. Aside from maturity, how does that comfort you now? Oh, your faith soothes my soul. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm actively trying to do this. With my children, you know, I'm blessed that uh, both kids are grounded. You know, um, my son is a successful lawyer. Um, uh, a father has made me a grandfather twice. Um, resides in the state of New Jersey. Practices law in New Jersey and New York City. Um, is a Georgetown graduate. Uh, his sister, my daughter, is... Um, uh, also a college grad, uh, works in Manhattan, has a degree in exercise science, uh, healthy, uh, harmonious, uh, very spiritual and driven. And, um, you know, I, I'm just happy and blessed. They're both healthy. Um, they both um, are engaged in each other's success. And, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's the beauty of it. You know, the fruit from your tree, man. Doing the things that, you know, you did uh, to become who I became. And I hope that the support that their mother and I give them um, will help them continue to grow, you know, and grow that direction, not that direction. Well, since you spoke of that direction... Was that direction always around you growing up? No, it was. I mean, you know, um, in the neighborhood. Yeah, I mean, you know, the neighborhood was. Tough, how did man. you, you navigate? Know, I, how did you navigate through that there, or well, was it like you have athletes now? Yeah, you have, I, you have people that are out there that are doing the wrong thing. Yeah, but I mean, they 
try to keep you straight. That's the guys I want to speak of. I knew I, didn't want, I knew I didn't want to be that dude on the corner. You could have been. I could have been. Well, no question. But I knew I didn't want to be that dude on the corner. I knew I didn't, I didn't hang out at the corner store. I knew that uh, uh, that life wasn't a life for me. And I tried to show that to my brothers and sisters behind me. I needed them to see that. So that was huge for me. How you, close were you with your brother? Very close. Um, I, lost, I lost track of him because I had a career. Well, because you were trying to, I mean, as, as they I mean, always say, it's always a pit bull in the family. Right. You were the first. Right. So you're doing what you had to do. Right. And you can't keep it so much tabs. Right. And these are the, the vendables that are always pulling at you that missed you. Right. They got to him. They got to him. And, 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 and this is the thing. I'm going to go to the crab in the barrel syndrome in the aspect that I found out, and it was hard. It really was harsh for me. Haters have a job to do, too. And you don't worry. You just keep going. The Italians say, come in. Keep going. Keep going, keep going. And I say that because all we have is who we have. That's it. That's it. If you're with me, you're, you're with me. me. If you're not, it's okay too. That's okay. But you had to grow to learn that because oh, yeah. everyone is not happy for they happy, but they're not happy for you doing better than no. that. No. Want to speak of that? Well. That's a good one? Yes, that's a good one because, you know, the separatist society we live in as African-American leaders, as you're that leader too, okay? I don't think In so. your own right. Oh, yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're leading a group, a, group, a group of men right now while coaching in a program here in Newark right now. And, and I respect the hell out of that. And those kids I know respect the hell out of that. Um, I just think that haters, Hate is my greatest motivator. Hmm. I let hate be my greatest motivator. You should have seen that smile. That smile. I let see. hate be my greatest motivator. You know, it gave me nothing but joy on Sunday to stand there as one of the. There have been 6,000 players that play for the Giants. 6,000? 6,000 have played since 1925. So you would huff and all the rest of the guys? All the rest of the guys. 6,000, Pooch. I'm one Speaking of the 100 greatest. I'm the 26 numbered 26 greatest player in the history of the New York Giants. 26. 26. But forget the number. You're there. I'm one of the 100 greatest players in the history of that organization. That's something. There's an organization in 1925 that wouldn't allow a Negro to play football. I was just getting ready to speak of that. You weren't understand they, that? Weren't they among the last, them and the Redskins? Yes. I'm sorry. The Commanders. Commanders. Did not have a Negro on the field. So I am. Roosevelt Brown was their first Negro on the field for Morgan State University. Thank you, sir. 1958. You know who told me that? Coach McLucas. He was down at Morgan State, and he said they gave him a bologna and cheese sandwich. It'll make you laugh. He said, I can't make it off this here. So he ended up going to Michigan State. Because Michigan State at that time, what's the guy, the coach's name? Bo Beckler. No, 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 no. Uh -huh. Mich Michigan State. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Fuzzy, uh, 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 Buzz. He had a crazy name, but he was among the first to integrate with Bubba Smith and on and on. I'm, I'm, I'm going to Google that when I leave. Yeah. And he said they were, that's why they were so powerful. Now, what's ironic, we, we're, we're running into time, but please give the proverb that you brought to my attention that I knew of with uh, Bear Bryant in the aspect of football. When of course. When you, when you was watching them. So I watched the video. Playing. Yeah, I watched the video uh, one day. Something said, you know, let him Google this. And I Googled something that came up on YouTube. And there's a video by Reggie Jackson. Reggie Jackson was talking about when Charlie Finley took them to Alabama. And then the That's Oakland, in the 50s. The Oakland A's were training. Uh, it's in the 70s. Maybe been 60s, 60s, mm -hmm. in heading in the 60s or 70s. I'm not quite certain, uh, but he talked about the fact that um, they went to Woolworks. They, they get went to something to eat. They went to get something to eat, 
and the man wouldn't serve them. And the man made it that, well, you guys can eat, but that... We don't serve them. We don't serve them. He said, well, if you don't serve him, you sure. don't serve none of them. And he told Reggie, I don't care if we eat hamburgers. We're going to leave this place and go somewhere else. They left and went somewhere else. They pulled the same shit. He turned around. He said, you know what? This one ain't good for us. We're going to go somewhere else. They got on somewhere else. They went to that somewhere else, and they ate their meal. On another incident, he said the same one of the same guys said something to him like, uh, oh, it was Bear Bryant. Bear Bryant saw them on the field playing <laughs> and said, uh, I need to get me some of them ends like that. I want to compete with Bo and, and, and this one and this one and Woody and, uh, at Ohio State mm -hmm. and Era Parsegian at Notre Dame. I'm going to get me some of them on my team. The next season, right before the game, the season started, Sam Cunningham. Sam Cunningham showed up, and the Alabama Crimson Tide played them in in in, in, bat, in uh, Los Angeles in that Coliseum, and Sam the Bam Cunningham ran all over his ass. <laughs> and after the game, he walked in that locker room, and he was so he was so distraught and torn up, he threw everything everywhere, and he said, "Y'all gonna get me some of them ends in here?" I'm telling you now, I'm leaving this goddamn program. <laughs> so and that was in 1969 now. So wait now, we're going to flip from that. That was good for those that need to see and those that knew already. How is it that athletics, per se, they're really pushing athletics, but they're not pushing academics? Academics. Got it, my brother. There was a time, you and I time, they push you through, uh, you take uh, advanced art, just as long as you play. As long as you play. Now it's totally different. Please explain that for the kids. So what's different That's is, the last one. What's different is, young people, you need to understand what NIL is. Okay? And it's name, image, and likeness money. And that's money they pay to, to you for being great, for being exceptional, from excelling in the classroom, Excelling on the football field, baseball field, basketball field, soccer diamond, whatever it is, golf range, whatever it is you do, that's for excelling. And then the next piece is get your education. If you've got to stay in school seven years, stay seven years, and you can now get paid for those seven years at that university. You can finish that MBA. So this way you get everything you were supposed to get that you signed up for at that institution and get paid at the same time. You can leave there and shake their hand. This has been one hell of a partnership. <laughs> I have an MBA. I know what it is to have money. I have a footprint and a legacy here. Now I'm going to go on and make another legacy. And at the same time, if I don't, I got something to fall back on. I made two, four, seven, nine, twelve, fifteen million dollars while in college and gotten my education. Now that young people, and I'm looking at the camera so you can see this, that is what you call a partnership. Don't they do it in high school too now? In high school. Yes, sir. And I want to work with that. So that's what I do now at Rockefeller Capital Management. I take young people and teach them how to become wealthy. I want to become rich. I want you to become wealthy. Also, Explain the difference of rich and wealthy. Shaq explained it very well. I want to hear your observation. My, I, my wealth is where your money works for you. You don't work for money. That's wealth. I'm going to synopsize it. That's wealth. Generational wealth. Generational wealth is when the money works in perpetuity. This, this group, the next group, the next group, the next group. But you also have to put something in. It goes back you to what put you something said. In. Theory of nothing. Life is nothing like an echo. From nothing means nothing. Nothing. So life is like an echo. You get out of it what you put into it. I hope. I hope as I close this episode, unfortunately so quickly, that you've had a class with the professor, Leonard Marshall, one of the greatest giants ever to play in their history of their franchise. 
and he has given you some serious, serious jewels that you should think on in self-respect, self-motivation.